funny. I was looking through some some old footage, and we'll see some of it in just a moment. Uh, a couple of days ago. I was trying to think, could it really be 24 years ago? Uh, in, in many ways, I said, in the nicest possible way, it feels like it was yesterday that you were yeah. lighting up the swimming pool. And Penny Haynes was not just the South African story, but in many ways, the story of the Atlanta Games. Does it feel like yesterday? Does it feel like a million years ago? No, it does feel like yesterday. Um, I think as you grow older, for me especially, I still work with young swimmers and I, I still see myself as one of them, you know. Now and then you have this idea, let me just jump in the water and show them how to do it and then you remember, no, you're a little bit older. <laughs> Wait, what about going into it? Because you had been to an Olympics before, you, I think you'd yeah. broken a world record earlier that year. So yes. there was certainly some excitement around the potential that you had to do something at the Games. Where were you? Was this, a, I'm going to take the world by storm or just kind of see what happens? I, I always say I never actually had these long-term goals. Obviously, growing up also in South Africa during apartheid years, never had Olympic dream. Simply swam because I want to be the absolute best I can be when I retire someday. And um, 92 was terrible, um, 33rd, 34th. Had to make some life-changing decisions. Would I go to America, etc. So I took that. And then in 94, I had a real disappointing swim at the World Champs, which again was a turning point for me. You know, our failures are really where we learn the greatest lessons that, you know, lead to our successes later. And so having broken the world record in March at our Olympic trials, I knew I stood a chance of winning, but I also knew that mentally I had to be in the right space. I couldn't be thrown by the enormity of the Olympics like I was in 92. So a very integral part of my preparation was visualization. But, you know, I always, especially when I speak to younger swimmers, I say by the time I got to the race at the Olympics, especially even the morning race, it was a matter of, you know, I've done this over a hundred times in terms of visualization, form the pathways, et cetera, neurologically. So all I have to do is my body has to do what my mind has already done a hundred times. And so I knew I was gonna swim my fastest time. That doesn't mean I'm gonna be the new world record holder because I thought the Aussie might just break my record in the race before me. You can't, you can't really be sure of the outcome because you can't determine what others will do. So I really believe the path to success and I'm sure both the, uh, your other two guests understand this too. The path to success is just always striving to be the best version of yourself that you can be. Well, when I touched the wall um, in the 100, in the final, people always ask, what is it like winning the Olympic gold? Well, I was relieved, uh, much like you were saying. <laughs> But at the same time, a little bit disappointed or let's say a little annoyed with myself because it was slower than the morning time. I, I don't know if you saw there, but there was quite a glide into the wall. I'm just lucky no one caught me. Yeah, you looked a bit sluggish. Yeah, I was. I was. Good, good point there. <laughs> and then, of course, I was even more sluggish on the podium because, um, you know, I don't know if you know this, but the anthem that they were playing was actually, they were playing it over the, radio, over the telephone from South Africa, because they had the wrong version there. Yeah, I found it out from a guy from Capital Radio a couple of years ago. And I remember standing on the podium thinking, I don't know this anthem, because okay, I've been there overseas since the change in the country. Should I be crying? I don't feel like crying. Um, I'm watching the flag going up, and I'm thinking I should show emotion, but I don't feel like emotion. All I was thinking about, though, and this is the honest truth, is the girl who got the bronze medal, Samantha Ryder, because she was a world record holder before me. And I was honestly feeling bad for Sam, because I thought either she's going to win or she'd get the silver. Um, and as great as Amanda Beard was, she was this little Amanda Beard, and she didn't need to go and take Sam's silver medals. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the